This happened a few years back, and it's one of the most terrifying things that I've ever experienced. It is 100% true, and I've struggled for years to make sense of how I allowed it to happen. But it did. I was a young 20-something, and I was working two jobs to save to head to university by the start of the following academic year, September in UK. This was during the beginning of the year, around February. The nights were long, dark, dim, and cold, and we often had bad weather, i.e. rain, fog, and wind. I was working at a department store in the day, and a restaurant slash bar come the evening. I was very tired, and overworking, but I was desperately saving. I drove a shitty five-door Peugeot 206, which had a broken back left passenger door handle. You had to manually lock it, or else it would remain open, even though you had to use the electronic key to lock the rest of the car. I had been working around 11 days straight like this, with varying day shifts, but mainly consisting of evening shifts bar work and waiting tables, around 6pm through 1am. I had finally finished up at the bar, and it was about a quarter to one in the morning, and I was locking up and heading to my car. It was dark, desolate, and loud. The wind was whirling like crazy, and there was an awful rain pouring. I shot to my car, whacked on the heaters and wipers full flow, and headed home with my music blaring. I lived about 25 minutes away, but would often take the route which meant I would miss the town center traffic. This was a route through country lanes. What I hadn't thought about was possible flooding, puddles, etc. that may halt my route. I was tired and just wanted to get home ASAP. So, I was heading down this country lane when I suddenly became aware of a large dark object spanning across the width of the road. I slowed down so I could take a good look and process what it was. Another point to note was that in the distance behind me for the majority of this journey was another car. I could faintly make out the headlights of a vehicle. The object in the road was still, spiky, and long. A tree branch? Great. The stupid thing was, I didn't even think this was weird. It was so majestically placed directly across the center of the road, and there was no way to pass. I honestly wrote it off in my mind as it had fallen that way. There was nothing around, no houses, buildings etc. The only other thing I could see were the faint headlights of the vehicle still behind me, but they seemed far away. This was a fairly straight country lane for about five or six miles. This is where I get a whole new level of stupid. Instead of turning around and heading back out towards the main roads, I wanted to get home so badly, and I knew if I moved it just a little out of the road I could skim past and be home in around seven or eight minutes as opposed to the extra 25 minutes heading back onto the roads and through the town. So I actually put my hazards on, parked slightly angled to the left-hand side of the road, got out of my car, and headed to the branch. It wasn't particularly heavy set, or big. It was just long and thin, and I headed to the end part which was to the right-hand side, leaned over and yanked the branch, pulling and walking backwards, essentially moving the branch back towards the bushes slash land, and exposing a gap on the left-hand side of the road where I could squeeze past. I hope that makes sense. This took probably less than two minutes, and I rushed as I was getting soaking wet and cold and darted back to my car. I should note that as I exited my car initially, I pressed the electronic key locking button, but I didn't turn back to look whilst doing this. I kind of just swung my arm backwards and pressed while focusing my attention on the end slash start of the branch I would be grabbing. Also, I shall note that you couldn't hear much. The wind was making that loud whale type noise, and it was fairly low visibility conditions, weather-wise. I did notice the headlights of the other vehicle now approaching as I whizzed back to the car to get on my way. The vehicle had slowed at around 5 yards away from my car, obviously slowing at the side of my hazard lights. I think I even remember putting my hands up to say, Sorry, thanks, I'll be out of your way in a second as I got to my car. I got back in, quickly started the engine, and pulled off. Starting the engine meant my already loud music started blaring immediately. Important to note, I couldn't hear anything but the music. I had literally just pulled off when I noticed two large beaming lights in my rearview mirror. I am shitty with these things. 
I always think someone has their full beams on when they don't. I'm very sensitive to light, so I always just write off particularly bright lights as my imagination. I pop the button on my rearview mirror to do that reflection of your window screen thing and dim the lights a bit. As I do this, I faintly remember seeing something move in the switch over, like a dark object disappearing from view quickly. I write this off also. I notice these headlights behind me are flashing, and they are ridiculously close to my car. This person is tailing me and flashing the shit out of me with their lights, and doing that swerving thing like they're going to overtake you, but dip back behind you trying to get you to pull over. I start getting pissed off as I'm thinking, what the fuck, just overtake me. I faintly start hearing the sound of a horn honking, and I think, okay, maybe there's something wrong with my car. It could even be a police officer. I'd better pull over, but I'll remain in my locked car. I indicate to pull over on the left-hand side, and this car immediately pulls up behind me. Before I can even turn my engine off and get to a halt at the side of my car, my back left passenger door swings open. A real-life person dives out of my car, rolls onto the grass on the left-hand side of the road, and runs into the forest-type area next to us. An actual real person had been sat or crouched or whatever the fuck they were doing in my back seat whilst I was heading home, music blaring, tired eyes and ears, completely oblivious. Please believe me when I say I know, I know how unbelievable this seems. How did I not feel someone was there? How would I not smell them or hear them breathing? I ask myself these very questions every time I think or refer to this story, but I had no idea that they were there. Before I can even comprehend what had just happened, a large man arrives at my window banging and shouting something that I could not understand at the time. I swear to God I just sat there for about 10 seconds staring behind me at the still open door, mouth wide open, before I even turned to face this person banging at my window. And then I turned to face him, and I see the panic and worry in his face. I will never forget his face. He looked like a terrified father. I don't know how to explain it. He just had this protective male stance and worried face. And then I just scream. I screamed for about 15 seconds as I felt tears streaming down my face. He bangs again on the window, and I managed to press the unlock button inside the car. He swings the door open and leans in shouting, Oh my fucking god, are you okay? Are you okay? Repeatedly as I sit there crying. He eventually manages to calm me down to a point where I can speak comprehensible words, and I just mutter, what the fuck? Over and over. He eventually explains that as he was slowly approaching my car with the hazards on, he watched a figure in all black dart from the forest type area on the left of my car, enter my car from the broken unlocked back left passenger door, just as I headed back towards my car whilst checking out the gap I had created by moving the branch, paying no attention to my car. Before he had a chance to make sense of what he had seen and alert me, I was driving off through the gap. He immediately started flashing his beams and doing that swerve thing and managed to get me pulled over. He sees the same figure dive out of my car and roll onto the grass, get up and dart back into the forest area. After about 10 minutes of back and forth heated conversation, I call 999 and report the incident. The police arrive and take a statement off of both of us and call for backup to search the wooded area straight away. Me and this guy are told to head straight home, which we did. He followed my car closely until he turns off at the end of the lane. I still have his contact details now, and I'm very thankful to him. The police never made any arrests or anything, and I never heard much back from them, as technically nothing happened to me, and they didn't find him that night. I don't know what this person had planned, whether he was trying to catch a lift or what, but it still haunts me. It haunts me that I could be so unaware and in so much potential danger without even realizing it. No sixth sense, no gut feeling like people describe. It was pure shock. I even remember hearing the back left door open and just not comprehending it. It made literally no sense. Through conversation with this guy who alerted me, we concluded that whoever this person was that got into my car, had placed the branch in the road in hopes that someone would pull over, get out, and move it, leaving them enough time to sneak in undetected 
with God knows what intentions. Exactly what I did. Stupid, irresponsible me. This experience damaged me to the point that I can't even drive alone at night anymore, even with a new car where all the doors lock, even with no wind or rain. I cannot and will not do it again. This means my partner has to drive me to and from work every day. I have to time my returns from outings so that I'm not left to drive alone at night. I know it seems extreme, but the shock of all this has never left me. I almost don't trust myself. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you would like a chance to have your story featured in an upcoming video, make sure you email it to yourmaker6260 at gmail.com. I appreciate everyone watching the video, and I want to give a special thank you to a few people that helped support the channel yesterday during our live stream. It helps out a lot more than you know, especially with a little bit of hassle YouTube's been having. But I definitely want to give a huge thank you to I'll Swallow Your Soul, Raphael V, Victoria Janina, Sims 3 Forever Dude, Becca, CP Edwards, and Karina Catalina, who I think I actually missed your question, which was, what part of Oregon did you live in? I'm from Salem, by the way. Uh, I've actually lived in Oregon a couple different times. The first time was in the Myrtle Creek, Tri-City area, all around there, uh, Roseburg. And then the last time was in Coos Bay. So that's where I was. Sorry I missed your question yesterday. There's also a lot more people I'd like to thank, and you'll see their names on the screen. Massive thank you to everyone supporting. Whether you're watching, donating, or anything, it really means a lot. This channel wouldn't be here without everyone, and I really think we have an amazing community. I hope everyone's having a great weekend, and I'll catch you in the next video. And just remember, it's always scarier if it's true.